Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on sum and difference trigonometric identities. So by now, you should be familiar with all the, uh, what the book calls the fundamental trig identities. And all of these I have made the claim are ones that you need to know really well, and they, you shouldn't feel like you're memorizing them. They just need to make sense. Um, but I'm not going to make that claim for what's coming up, because if, if I ask you what makes sense in this situation, uh, if I ask you to evaluate the following and see what's under those boxes, if you're like most students, you'd say that you expect to see a 15 degrees under that first box. If you're like most students, you expect to see a 90 degrees under the second box. That's what seems to make sense. Um, 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. This is consistent with student intuition, and, and it's most likely because this feels like distribution. If I had um, five times 45 degrees minus 5 times 30 degrees, our distributive property says that yes, that is 5 times 45 minus 30 degrees. Our distributive property applies to multiplication, and that's what's going on here. 5 is being multiplied times all these uh, individual expressions. But remember, trig is not multiplication. So even though this first one is true, this is not multiplication, neither is this. Um, and so, unfortunately, none of these are true. Our intuition fails us here. So we need some properties to help us figure out how to handle addition and subtraction within a trig function. And that brings us to the sum and difference identities. Uh, I'd suggest you pause the video for a moment, take a look at these, study this, make sense out of it. Uh, if you're a little bit perplexed by this minus plus sign, and, and why did they use that instead of the plus minus sign, well, this is basically a way of getting two formulas into one. Uh, one of the formulas is, says that cosine of A plus B equals cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B. Uh, our book, by the way, uses the letters U and V instead of A and B. Um, I find that with my messy writing and many students' messy writing that it gets too hard to distinguish the U and the V, so I, I'm using B, capital A and B here. But in any case, that's one of the formulas for cosine um, plus minus, but you can also um, reverse those and get minus plus. And so just notice that the sign changes, S-I-G-N sign switches uh, depending on what formula you use. Uh, now for the sine sum and difference formula here on the bottom, uh, notice that the sign S-I-G-N sign does not switch. Uh, if you have a plus on the left side, you have a plus on the right side. And notice that sine is grouped with cosine instead of cosine, cosine up here and sine, sine. On the bottom one, sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And if that plus becomes a minus on the left, it also becomes a minus on the right. So we really have a total of four formulas up on the screen right now. And these are our sine and cosine sum and difference formulas. So let's see how it works. All right, in our first example, we're going to find that, um, that we can find the sines and cosines, et cetera, of more angles that are not special. So let me repeat. This is not one of our special angles, 195 degrees. However, the approach is that we consider our special angles and how 195 degrees may be expressed as the sum or difference of any two of those special angles. So please don't sit there copying this graphic down. Um, I trust, I need to trust that you can come up with all of these on your own. But again, think of which two special angles add up or subtract to 195 degrees. And how about 150 degrees and 45 degrees? There's one option. Do you see another one? Well, how about 135 degrees and 60 degrees? That would also work, right? So, we got options here. We can express it like that, or you see there are also some differences as well. I could say it's 225 degrees uh, minus 30 degrees. That would also work, um, et cetera. There are more options than I even have listed here. And the point is, just pick one of them. Uh, any one of them will work, and I challenge you to confirm this, that you can try multiple of these options here and that they all give you the same answer. But let's just go with the first one that we had there, the 150 degrees and 45 degrees being, uh, being added. All right, and um, let's see how this works. 
I'll bring up the formula here as a reminder. And so again, we rewrite sine of 195 degrees as the sum of two special angles. It always has to start that way, or the difference. And then when I look at this formula, I realize that a plus here means I need a plus over here. So let's just plug in. 150 degrees represents A, 45 degrees represents B, and therefore sine, I'll just rewrite it here, 150 degrees plus 45 degrees equals sine of 150 degrees, uh, cosine of 45 degrees, plus cosine of 150 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. And this is where you can tell that being really comfortable with your unit circle is a necessity. Okay, sine of 150 degrees, that's in the second quadrant, but we're dealing with opposite over hypotenuse, so it is still positive. Cosine of 45 degrees, I could do 1 over root 2, and that's normally what I like to do, but I'm looking ahead a little bit and saying, you know what, I would really prefer, if I can avoid it, not to have um, an irrational denominator. Notice that I'm setting up to have 2 root 2 as a denominator. So um, that's where I prefer to do the other um, way of writing that. I prefer to write root 2 over 2. Remember, that's, also, that's the same as 1 over root 2, right? Uh, plus cosine of 150 degrees. That is negative, root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees, root 2 over 2. And um, at this point, just simplify. So 1 times root 2 gives me root 2. It's over 4, but notice that my next denominator, I already, without even trying, have a common denominator. So uh, over that same denominator of 4, I'll say minus root 3 times positive root 2 would be minus root 6. And you know what we do next? We put a box around it, because guess what? It's just that simple. We're done. About all more that you can do is check this on a calculator, and I would consider that to be a good use of the calculator to check whatever you've done algebraically or on paper. And we see that when I type both the original expression, sine 195 degrees, and our final answer to the calculator, we get the same thing. So, hope that was simple enough. Uh, for the second one, I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to go through this one a little bit more quickly to keep the video from being longer than it needs to be, but I do have to address a cu couple things that are different here. Now it's in radian, and this is the rare, rare case where I'm going to say, you know what, I'll admit, as, just while you're starting to fall in love with radians, um, degrees are easier to work with. Um, so let's convert this into degrees. Uh, we know that pi is equal to 180 degrees, so if you plug that in, um, 180 degrees divided by 12 gives me 15, and 15 times 17 is going to be 255. Uh, so that is equal to tangent of 255. And again, I make the argument that it's really easier to deal with degrees here. Uh, the reason is because if we look at all our special angles, and try to figure out which ones add or subtract to 255 degrees. Um, in radian, you get stuck with all these pi over 6 and pi over 4 and pi over 3. You've got all these different denominators, and it's, it's hard to quickly add and subtract all of that. So that's my only case where I'm going to say, yes, let's go back to degrees. They're just easier. Um, so when you have 255 degrees, you could say, um, how about 210 degrees? plus 45 degrees, and again, just like the last time, there are multiple other ways we could do this as a sum or a difference. I'll trust that you could find more if, if, if necessary. Um, all right. So here I'm going to ask that you just pause the video and see if you can follow this through. Notice that we're, we don't really, uh, or I haven't introduced a tangent sum and difference formula. I'm just using the um, sine and cosine one and my knowledge of the quotient rule, which says sine over cosine gives tangent. So take a moment, study that, see if it all makes sense. I'm not going to go through it in detail. Okay, uh, uh, one area that you may have a little bit of trouble with um, is getting from this bottom red step over to this blue step. Uh, basically what I've done there is I've noticed that, again, I've got the same denominator in all four terms. So this is one term with a denominator of 4, right? And then this other fraction, this is another term, and its denominator is 4. 
So I've got four total terms in the numerator and denominator of this big fraction, and they do all cancel each other out. Now, this is where I'd ask students, please be very careful if you are not confident in what you're doing with fractions. This is all a big source of trouble for students. Um, please ask and, and get your questions answered regarding fraction operations in this context. But at that point, so negative 1 times positive root 2, that does give me um, negative root 2. Negative root 3 times positive root 2, that does give me um, minus root 6, and so on minus root 6 on the bottom, but I've got a double negative here on this last term, so that's plus root 2. And I could have stopped right there. I just have a slight preference for having more positive uh, uh, terms than negative. So I basically took the top and bottom and multiplied both top and bottom by negative 1, and I just felt like this final answer was a little cleaner. Now, if you take time to uh, type that into a calculator just to confirm our answer, you will see that, yes, that works. But um, if you look at that final answer as in decimal form, something should pop out to the observant student. You should go, wait a minute, I've seen that 0.732 before. Usually it's got a 1 in front of it. Does that look familiar? 1.732 is root 3. And sure enough, if we type root 3 plus 2 in there, we find that that really is an even more simplified version of our final answer. Um, I would ask the, the uh, student who wants to be challenged, why don't you give that a shot? See if you can prove that these are the same thing. But for right now, I'm just going to um, say that if you got to this box, if you got to that point, we'll, we'll call it a success for today. Okay. Um, in the last example, we are being asked to write the following expression as the sine or cosine of an angle. Notice that we are not being asked to evaluate it. We are not, so I might end up with sine of some angle or cosine of some angle, but I don't have to actually evaluate what the opposite over hypotenuse or adjacent over hypotenuse is. Um, this is just asking us to use our sum, um, sum and difference formulas to simplify uh, this a little bit. So we have to look at those two formulas, and specifically look at the right-hand side of those formulas. Look at this and this, and say, which mold does this fit? Now, at first glance, we may see the sign and, and jump to the gun and say, oh, that looks like this bottom formula. But notice that sine is being grouped with sine. Cosine is being multiplied by cosine. So that is not the case on the bottom here. Um, so it really is just the top formula in disguise. So let's see how we can make this look a little bit more like this top formula. Um, and, and again, you're going to need to be comfortable with just kind of algebraically manipulating um, expressions in this process. And the way I'm going to choose to do it is I'm going to say I really would be more comfortable seeing cosine and cosine first. So I'm going to move that term out to the front, and I'm going to factor out the, the negative sign. I'm going to factor out that negative right there. So I'm going to call that negative parentheses cosine 2 pi over 5, cosine pi over 9. And um, since this is really, uh, the signs are really a positive, but remember I have a, a, a minus being factored out front here, I need this to be a minus sign of 2 pi over 5. That's the trick. That's the, that, that's the part where I could see students easily making a, a silly error. So take a moment and confirm to yourself that that, that really is just a, a, a valid rewriting of our original expression. And at this point, when I uh, look at the formula, I see that the 2 pi over 5, that's where the a is in the formula. And the pi over 9, that's where the b is and, and in both um, parts of that formula. So if a is 2 pi over 5 and b is pi over 9, that means that I can say that that whole thing is equal to this left side. Now notice that since we have a, a, a minus, on the, we, we have a minus in this position, that means we need the plus over here in this position. So this will be cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus pi over 9. And as far as what to do with this minus sign hanging out here on the outside, uh, let's just, um, oops, let's just uh, bring that along for the ride. Now, the last thing I'm going to insist that you do is I do need you to combine those two fractions. 
Um, don't leave them there with uncommon denominators. Multiply this by 5 over 5. Multiply this by 9 over 9. And fairly quickly, we'll say 9 times 2 pi is 18 pi plus another 5 pi. That's going to give me 23 pi. And the denominator is 45. And I've got a negative cosine here. So I'm going to be satisfied with saying that that is a valid final answer. Uh, we could check that in a calculator. And for those who are interested in a challenge, once again, I'll ask you if you can see, if you can prove that that's also the same as positive cosine of 22 pi over 45. Um, again, I, I, could, I could show here that um, typing it into a calculator, um, that our original um, final answer does work. But I'll also show you that cosine of 22 pi over 45 also works. And again, for those who are up for a challenge, see if you can prove that that red boxed answer is the same as this blue boxed answer. All right. Um, so if you're wondering, is that all that, these, uh, that this trig identity allows us to do, just get a few more angles without a calculator? It does more than that, but we'll wait for class to, to get into that. Here is your opportunity to practice. Have at it. OK, let me reveal the answers. Uh, for the first two, here are the answers. And you're noticing that, that that square root of 2 and that square root of 6 sure pop up a lot in this process. That's, that's true. So you see that they've been verified by a calculator. Uh, for part C, your final answer should be sine of 19 pi over 28. Again, verified via calculator. And finally, um, we should end up with negative cosine of 7 degrees. Again, if you're up for the challenge, see if you can prove to yourself that that's the same as cosine of 173 degrees.